Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to talk about something that is just driving me nuts. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the industry here, we're going to talk a little bit about modeling, but in general we're going to talk about pros and cons of automation and why you can't automate model development, but let's just dive on in. Okay, so I've seen a lot of push on the tech side for automation, which is awesome, give you a thumbs up. Um, on the banking side as well, I see a lot of this like new discovery that we're going to automate things, which is good, again, for most things, but there's a lot of things you can't automate. And really the thing that's just bugging me, and I think that it's the lack of competency in some of these areas, is that a lot of people don't fully understand the model development process. And I'm talking people that have been in the industry for like one to five years. I'm talking people that have been in the industry for 30 years, 40 years, right? People just don't seem to understand model development and model validation, again, so different areas of this, everything revolving around models, risk management, pricing, making money, right? Everybody's driven by making a dollar and cutting costs, but nobody really understands the technicality, um, essentially what quants do. And this is extremely frustrating because nobody really gets what we do in the value added. People think that, for example, like you pay them to build a model. We just need a model, right? It doesn't matter how good the model is. We just need a model. And then somebody's going to validate this model and then we're going to implement this model. And so we just need one or two people to do this. And then I'm gonna hire like 100 salespeople and they're gonna go out there and they're gonna make a bunch of money for us because they're all really great people with business degrees. So in the loan world, mortgage, auto, credit card, um, anything that's a loan, student loans, for example, they are driven by models. The model determines who to make loans to. These models determine which rate to give you. These models determine how to service your loans. These models determine everything about this. These models determine who to market these to. And so getting back to this modeling piece in automation here, right? Modeling is very complicated if you wanna make more money. So this is really easy to see in investment firms. So I don't see this problem as consistently as I do with banks. So investing firms, for example, right? You price something. So let's say you price derivative products uh, and you have a price which is close to what the actual true price is. Um, you see some arbitrage and you make money. If another firm is slightly more accurate than you and they can execute that trade in a faster manner than you, they're gonna beat you all day, right? They're gonna make money. Um, you might think like, oh, it's a teeny amount of money. They scale it up to millions of dollars. They make a ton of money on this. In the banking world, it just, this concept doesn't hit people. You don't realize like if you have a model and it sucks or it's mediocre and it does an okay job at things, um, the business side is managing the risk on where to set thresholds and that's fine. But if your model was more accurate, right, is a better model, a more robust model. So in loan models, for example, there's not a lot of conceptual soundness around stationarity testing. I know it's shocking. It should be shocking to you. Um, as an industry, we're broken. We don't see that. When you tell people about stationarity and credit models, they go, oh, this isn't time series. And then their data and their model works for a year to two years and then it fails. Maybe five years, it fails. Then they have to build a new model. They have to build a new model. They have to build a new model because their models are not robust across time because there's stationarity issues. But what ends up happening is that there's not enough emphasis on the technicality aspect of the modeling here. And so these people have dreamed up this idea that we're gonna automate model development. And there are software companies out there that sell packages that do this. And it goes through and it generates like a hundred models or a thousand models and it picks the best models based on some minimal criteria like oh best fitting or you know i don't know some some ridiculous criteria and then they create this model and then it goes to validation again validation can do a crap job at validating this because at the end of the day it doesn't really matter right development followed the five steps of clicking buttons through a program validation is going to have to follow the same five steps so you get consistency coming in and going out if you had a real validation team validate this they're gonna tear this thing apart because real models and real data are far more complex than what you can automate. And this is where the issue comes up. This is the whole crux of this video, the conclusion here right at the end. You can't automate model validation and you can't automate model development if you want good models that are going to be competitive, okay? Let me restate that. You cannot build good models that will be competitive. You can build good models that are just generic average models but you're gonna be missing out on a lot of money. Um, you're gonna be taking on a lot of excessive risk that you don't see because you automated this process. Models are very dynamic. They change and adapt to the data that's going into them. So as the data is dynamic and changing, you have to have models that can handle these shocks and shifts and changes in data. And we don't see that a lot of times with these automated approaches. And so 
When people are pushing for automation, I'll give you an example here. Um, I automated data quality processing. So one of my jobs is all the data that came in from specific sources, I'm not gonna say which, but it would all come in and then I would actually have to do it by hand, take a look at it, do edits. Too much work. I created an automated tool that would process hundreds if not thousands of variables for us. It would flag specific variables. We would pull up the charts, pull up the data, take a look at it, figure out why things were off, okay? Great example of automation, um, perfect use, right? It flags things, there's still human intervention. With model development automation though, it's a little more complex than this. You can't just run it through the same five steps and get the same stuff. And I think this is where banks are really failing and falling behind the investment side specifically is that investment side is more willing to take risks, which I mean is good and bad, but at the same time, uh, we're failing to implement new technology, new methodologies, uh, we're failing to hire intelligent, bright people, which is gonna come out in another whole video series on the massive education gap we have in the industry, in the US and globally. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just, you can't automate these things and it's extremely frustrating from a quant perspective that you think you can take something so technical, you can dumb it down to five steps and you can process it. So I've seen this in practice here. I've had somebody actually use software that automates, kind of automates a model, right? It's really easy, click through. And then I've actually benchmarked a model. So I created my own model by hand using statistical theory and insight from the business, uh, built a model and it outperformed the automated model significantly. Um, the person on the other end of that was shocked that it was so different because this tool is claim to fame, greatest, best thing out there, pick the best model. And then it failed horribly when we put in out of time testing. And of course this model we de I developed on the other side uh, did really well. So. This is just a perspective for you guys on some of the issues we deal with in quantitative finance. Some of the battles between the quant side and the business side, there's just not a lot of understanding between the two halves. So trying to bridge that gap is challenging. Um, so again, conclusion of this video, I don't think you can automate model development. Sure, you can build models, but they're gonna be trash. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>